correct camera. Here we are. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, uh, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of our Thursday evening live stream. Um, I added a new camera to this. We've got the normal view, which is this one, which is a, an HD 1080p uh, camera. And then and there is this one, which I can look at right where it has the uh, uh, teleprompter. And then there's this one, which is the camera that can look down on here. Now you see immediately the problem. This is supposed to be a 1080p camera, and it blocks it into this uh, uh, 4x3 uh, aspect ratio instead, instead of the correct 16x9. Uh, uh, and i got to tell you, I spent about a half an hour with OBS earlier this evening, and I can't, not for the life of me, tell the thing. I just added a camera. Here are the characteristics. Please make it HD. Please make it 14 by 9. And they don't. If you look at this carefully, at the quality, it's really kind of ugly. This is a, a 480p, I guess. Um, and it is really poor. So if somebody knows a lot about um, OBS and how to get it set up, it's, it appears to me to be software written by a programmer for programmers. And I am, well, I've programmed before, obviously, but not in this kind of thing. And there's no single place that you can go to say, I want my cameras to be at their 1080p resolution, and I want what goes out over the uh, Starlink, also 1080p. And for the life of me, I can't figure it out. So if you have any ideas and could uh, tell me something, I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, you can send your ideas and thoughts to askdave at arrl.org. That's askdave, all one word, at arrl.org. And help this old guy out here. Man, I can't make uh, any sense of it. I've been using this sometimes when I want to make uh, Ask Day videos, and I'll just use OBS to record. But the problem is, in spite of what is set up, it's supposed to record it at 1080. It actually records at 720. And... I don't know why. I can't figure that out. So, fortunately, I do understand um, Cyberlink Power Director enough to make it uh, manage with that. So, there we go. So, um, let's see. We've already had our first uh, top chat uh, from Mayhem1421. $5. says, Evening, Big Dave. Hope you're feeling better. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'll tell you what happened last week. Um, I am very close to selling the airplane. It'll be gone when the last money is paid. I've been paid about half of uh, the money. And it's still sitting in a hangar up at Delta. It's a guy from Grand Junction who's buying it. He normally flies bigger airplanes. And I went up with him on Friday. Now, to go up with him on Friday, I went up t Thursday to shake the cobwebs off a little bit and fill up the gas tanks. And in so doing, I fell twice. Um, I fell oh, while pulling the airplane out of the hangar because, you know, there's a tow bar. And when you disconnect that, I had to uh, pick that up. YouTube is not receiving. This is you know what I'm doing. Game on Starlink. 
So we'll see how well it does. Um, last time we had, two weeks ago, we had trouble with the local internet. So I went to Starlink. It says uh, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. So hopefully it'll be nice and it'll be a little bit jerky, but uh, it is still playing okay. Anyway, I fell twice. That was the first time. And then when I went down and I got it down by the gas pump, and you got to fly it down there basically because it's too far to drag it. So I got down there and got everything set up. It's a habit I picked up in Arizona where once you put in your credit card, you had two minutes to start pumping. So you had to have everything ready before you put the credit card in, and that's what I did. Um, so I was getting things ready, and um, I fell. I reached over to pick up the hose, which was on the ground, so I could climb the ladder, so I could pump it in, and fell again, and could not get up. And I was the only person around. So I crawled on my knees over to the ladder and pulled myself up just as a couple guys from Smiling Aviation arrived. And um, one of them said to the other, uh, hey, fill him up. I don't want him falling off the ladder. I don't think I would have fallen off the ladder because that's something to hold on to. But I've had real serious balance issues. So, yes, uh, you can see the cane over right there. That's the cane. And I'm supposed to use that indoors as well as outdoors. And it's a lifesaver, I will tell you. But uh, be that as it may, by the time I got home that evening, I was not in real good shape. So um, I apologize for canceling the live stream at the last minute. I was going to try and cancel it earlier, but, um, you know, on my phone, I, I guess I'm going to have to set up YouTube a little bit better because it wouldn't let me edit or and send out a post to everybody. But I'll get that fixed in the future. Anyway, I'm feeling much, much better now. I am undergoing therapy for balance issues. They're trying to figure out exactly what's wrong. I'm sure it has nothing to do with age, but it might have to do with diabetes or something like that. I don't know. They'll pick a cause. It could be the phase of the moon, the tides, climate change maybe. I don't know uh, what it is that's causing the problem. But I tell you what, I've got to, uh, got to be a little bit more careful moving around. I guess it's probably this is the right time to sell the airplane. If I can't manage it by myself, then I've, I've got no no right to be there. I mean, um, you know, I can't have people use a crane or something to lift me into the seat. But uh, the airplane, by the way, works beautifully. Once we got it started on Friday, we had a very good flight. Um, he's used to much bigger aircraft. And when it came time to um, try a stall, we went up for a, a full flap stall and you raise this as you pull the throttle out so you're trying to find the lowest speed at which you can fly and then it will stall now the way and the way it stalls is it pitches forward um, because the wings lose the ability to fly so it pitches forward the way you solve it is absolutely counterintuitive so you have to learn this. They drill this into you. The problem with the wings is that they've lost the ability to fly. So if you pull back on the stick, you just make it worse. The way to get out of a stall is to push forward on the stick and gas it and goose it, you know, a little bit. Actually, just pushing forward on the stick is a, enough to do it. Um, but he pushed it forward like he would on a bigger commercial aircraft, and we just about went into a vertical dive. And I said, no, that's not how you recover from a stall in this aircraft. You just goose it. You touch it just a little bit, and it'll recover. So he says he's, he's probably going to get a um, 
flight instructor to help him adapt to the light sport aircraft, which is good, fine. And I'm happy for him. He seems happy with the aircraft. Uh, this is one of the slowest moving sails I've ever seen. He actually first looked at the aircraft a month or month and a half ago, and he came up to Delta, came down to Delta from Grand Junction. Let's see, Grand Junction is lower than Delta. He came up to Delta. Um, but Grand Junction's north of Delta, so I say up when it's north. I don't make any sense anyway. So um, anyway, he had a lot of questions about it. We agreed to a price. He's already paid me a good chunk of that. And when he gets back from a trip he's making, we're going to finalize the, uh, the paperwork. The paperwork for selling an airplane is remarkably simple. It's just a couple uh, forms that you've had. Of course, if it's a form, the federal government's involved. A form that you submit to them to tell them that you're transferring ownership to somebody else. The bill of sale is just between us. And then there are two forms. Why there are two forms, I do not know, but there are two forms that have to be submitted. Plus, in the pile of documentation that I've got for the aircraft, there's a um, little certificate of airworthiness that needs to be signed and uh, sent in. So very good. I'm, I'm really happy that that's happening. Uh, the money uh, is going to go against um, the loan, it's actually a home equity line of credit, to pay off the Jeep that I bought. And uh, now that we have a motor home, we're going to go try it at Moab here for a couple days. Uh, we, we had our first shakedown uh, to the RV park about 10 miles north of here. And I actually had to go home once to get some tools to come back to make the thing work. And then... Um, so we're going to go to Moab, which is not close enough to slip back home and pick up something we forgot. So this is going to be our real shakedown on whether we've got everything we need. And then Loretta and I are going to Dayton. We will be at Dayton. Um, so it looks like we're staying at the KOA in Dayton. Somebody wrote last year and suggested a state park that was a little bit closer, but I checked with them and they're already uh, booked, completely booked. I put myself on the uh, waiting list because at Dayton, they, they actually take some RVs there. And I, uh, I didn't go last year. I put myself on the waiting list the year before that, and I'm still on the waiting list. <laughs> That's how hard it is to get in there uh, with the RV. But um, in fact, during uh, when, when I made the uh, reservations, I'll be at the Dayton KOA, which is absolutely opposite town from where the event is. And uh, we've been there before. It's a nice camp. They've had some fire damage, but apparently that's been taken care of. But that's where we will be staying. We'll be towing the Jeep. So I'll, my wife will drop me off at Dayton, and she'll go off and do her art thing and then pick me up. Uh, from there. So that's where we'll be. If you're at Dayton, um, then, uh, you know, come by, say hi. Um, and I'll be at Dayton and I will try to drop by or at least swing by the ARRL area several times a day. And so that would be a good place if you want to say hi or if uh, you've got an idea for me or a question or something like that. I think we can do uh, really well. So that's the news. Now, um, I received this email from um, Bob, KL7FM, and it was interesting enough that I uh, wrote back to him and asked for his permission to share it with you on this broadcast. I'd like to improve this broadcast, if I can, with shared ideas, okay? Um, shack photos would be great. All of these can go to sdavidarrl.org, 
not .net, .org. And the nice thing about doing it through that email channel is you can attach things like pictures and so on. And we can go through shack photos, pictures of your latest projects, stuff like that. I'd like to do that to kind of start sharing. I know one of the things I really enjoy about this event, this weekly event, is the talking with you on the radio. And I've got everything set up for tonight. And it looks like the band is open but not jammed. So we'll see how we can do here. So this is um, what KL7FM sent. This isn't exactly a question for you, but something interesting that I had uncovered with local TV interference I was causing. I have a Yesu FT-857D transceiver, nice transceiver, and an SGC, SG-237 antenna coupler that is used to feed a 40-foot wire in my backyard. Now, uh, as I just mentioned on um, a video that I did on antenna tuners, which will is up, it's the ARRL supplemental video for, for this month, and I, I will have to make an equivalent for Ask Dave. But one of the things you can do with almost all uh, antenna tuners is that you can feed a long wire with them and tune that long wire. So he has a long wire. Um, he says it's uh, 40 feet long. That's a little short for like 40 meters, but it can be made to work. I have a wire counterpoise running around the backyard stapled to the bottom of my wo wooden fence. This all works great except that for the past four years or so, whenever I operate, our, I cause our local TV stations on channel 2 and 5 to blank out. At first this would happen intermittently and was driving me crazy. I took the SG-237 apart. The SG-237 is an antenna tuner. And looked over all the surface mount components, checked all the grounds, etc. Nothing seemed to work. Then I tried ferrite beads, which did help when I slid them to very precise places on my station ground. Also, double check all my station grounds and my counterpoise connections. This was irritating to my wife. Not a good idea. As she liked to watch the news at the same time as my evening net check in. Then two weeks ago, I had to turn off the water in the crawl space of our condo to repair the kitchen faucet. Where the main water pipe came out of the ground was a large gauge ground wire that I think is the building ground for the condo. About OO gauge wire. Uh, you've got, you know, you get down to, to size 2 and size 1. And then it goes size zero, and then zero, 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 and zero, 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 zero. And beyond that, it gets not a lot bigger than that for home use. Okay, so where were we here? Uh, where the water main water pipe came out of the ground, there was a large gaze ground wire that I think is the building ground for the condo. And it was clamped to the two-inch copper water main, but the clamp was totally corroded away and the wire was loose. I reported this to the condo board and they promptly set an electrician to repair it. Bingo, problem gone. The ground connection was made at the soil level and due to moisture and electrolytic action, the clamp simply dissolved over time. I thought this bit of trouble I had could possibly help others who can't quite figure out, out why or where something like this could happen. I enjoy your column. And this is Bob Norgard, KL7 FM. So thank you. And uh, I've now shared that with you. Grounding is important, extremely important. There are tools that you can use to test grounds. Um, but their use is a little bit 
weird in that you can put the wire that goes to the ground, put this clamp around the wire, it'll tell you how many ohms are in the circuit. But it only works if something on that same circuit also goes into the ground because there has to be a completed loop. I've got one, I suppose I should, I think I have done a video on it at some point, a ground tester. Okay, so, and then we've also had a um, top chat from Von Sigley, Von Ziggel, uh, $10, and he shows a picture of somebody laughing on the ground and pounding the floor. So, I guess that's good. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, let's go up to the top. Now, remember, again, our purpose here is just to meet, chat, and share. And if you have a question, I'll try to answer it if I can. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, send it to me via askdave at arrl.net. I'm sorry, not .net, .org. .net is for their members alias. The .org is for the organization. Okay, Leo Gustafson says, good afternoon, Dave and everyone. KK7CLY checking in from Albany, Oregon. Nice, mild, sunny day and 64 and clear. UPS is picking up the spreaders today and upon receipt, Chris and his staff at Buddy Pole are going to repair them. Uh, Leo, as you may recall, uh, has a uh, Buddy Pole hex beam from... It's really designed to be portable and not designed for high wind, but um, it does work and, and well. All the hex beams do work. I have the MFJ, and I had the thing down because uh, 20 meters stopped working. So um, I found out that a wire had snapped. I also found out that several little things that were insulators that contained the wire as it went around the hex, hexagon, uh, had been destroyed by UV. I've had this antenna five years, and I suppose I should do a five-year review on it and then order up a bunch of these. And I think the next time I may get a, a lift truck to take me up and uh, do that, uh, rather than try and take the antenna down because you can't take it down all the way. If you pull it down all the way to where it starts to rest on the ground, you can snap it. So um, I'm going to go up there with it and uh, make these uh, changes and so on. Okay, uh, Bill Myers, good evening, Dave and all loggies from northern Wisconsin. Currently 45 degrees at K-A-H-E-I-M. Uh, Optical Man Jeff. Hello, Dave and Ologies from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where it's partly cloudy and 47. It is 63 here and 22% humidity. And the dew point's 23, so it's going to be pretty dry. There are a few clouds out there. Um, okay, let's see. Hugo Quintana says, good evening, Dave. Fellow Augies from Yuma, Arizona. No traffic. There's a Q code for that, by the way. Q-R-U means no traffic. Uh, or I have nothing for you. But usually taken to mean no traffic. Uh, but he's checked in, and I appreciate that. Uh, I wish the Yuma Ham Fest were still running, but they had to stop it because... They couldn't get enough volunteers. Apparently, a lot of people think that, you know, once you've set it up, you can just have the ham fest, but it doesn't work that way. Having uh, been uh, deeply involved with the uh, Boulder Ham Fest, which was held in Longmont, and the Longmont Club just had its ham fest, but I was the treasurer for Boulder. So a lot of work to set up. A lot of work to tear down and somebody had to be there to handle all the issues that came up and so on and when you're running a multi-day ham fest 
you've got all sorts of things that need to be dealt with. So they need multiple volunteers. Now, I think what has happened, there has been a quasi simplification movement um, that says you've got too much stress, you need to simplify your lives. And one of the things they suggest is getting rid of commitments like this because they can be stressful and they certainly can. But we need to remember how much we rely on volunteers in all walks of life. Down here in our uh, area, we have volunteer fire departments um, and the uh, so-called first responders, they've got them spread out over the county uh, and they've given him some first aid kits and a defibrillator and stuff. And these people can get to somebody's home a lot faster than the ambulance and the fire trucks and so on. And so they'll go over and do the kinds of things that they can do. Uh, they can do some first aid, they can help stop bleeding, they can use the defibrillator um, and so on. One of my friends who was a first responder used it on another one of my friends to keep him alive uh, after they it took him about a minute to get there. And one of the delays was going down the wrong driveway because they were not labeled properly. So if you're in a rural area, let's make sure your stuff's labeled properly. But we need volunteers. And, you know, this simplification movement is wonderful, guys, but we still need volunteers. And that's true in ham radio. This is supposed to be the year of the volunteer, or maybe that was last year. And um, because it takes a lot of volunteers to run the ARRL, there's a small paid staff at headquarters. They put the magazines together, they answer your queries. And then there are people like me. I write an article for them once a month, but I'm not an employee. I'm a, uh, uh, I guess it's a, a contractor kind of thing. Anyway, they pay me with the 1099. So that's what I use that for. So, uh, by the way, it's time for me to write my column again, this time for July. So if you've got some really cool questions, send them to me because I'd like to answer them. Most of the questions are about antennas and grounding. So if you have another question about something else, do send me that question for just a bit of variety in uh, what we're doing. Okay, um, Hugo Quintana is KK7DTF. Mark French says hello. Reed AB8AS says hello, David Augies. Neil Marsh, who somehow comes in in green, says good evening, Dave and fellow Augies from W7NRM near Mount St. Helens. Doug, I've been to Mount St. Helens. It's impressive. Doug Dry, who is the one who uh, makes my telephone ring here, the uh, uh, dial telephone. Uh, good evening, Dave and all loggies everywhere from Doug, KD4NC in Kennesaw, Georgia. 84 degrees here today. Yes, yeah, summer's just around the corner. Terrence in London, 2 Echo 0, India, Papa Kilo, where it is 2.14 in the morning there. Uh, tomorrow. Hi, Dave. Hope all is well with you. I am doing much better. Thank you. Ralph Leland, hi Dave and everybody, K4TA, Fork Union, Virginia, Clearance 74. John Ward, hello from Laurel, Maryland. I've actually been there. And uh, as I recall, it's a little bit north of D.C. and slightly east. Uh, I think there's a big uh, hospital there, if I recall, or maybe it's a NIST facility or something. Um, mayhem, oh, I talked about uh, Mayhem's contribution. Uh, to Not contribution, can't use the word contribution. I'm not a charity. Um, support. 
Uh, evening, Big Dave. Hope you're feeling better. In the, Doug Dry says, in the real world of software development, Dave, programmers do not design user interface. But these days, with all the rapid development and cost cutting, there's a tendency to cut corners. Well, um, OBS is freeware. Uh, it's heavily used for live streaming. Lots of people use it. People have made packages to put on top of it so that you can get nice, wonderful effects and stuff like that. Um, I, I know, um, oh, I'm trying to think of his name, Ham Radio Crash Course um, has really done some stuff with his where his comments are actually streaming on the screen and uh, stuff like that. It's really nice. Very good. He's got several cameras, so he's got one focused where he's writing things and so on. And he does things on his live stream, like build kits and things like that. Okay. So, um, I've seen some wild user interfaces in my time. And um, the problem with this interface is that it looks simple but it's deceptively complicated. For example, um, I mentioned this other screen that I've got. This should be, uh, now notice down here, there's a little bit down at the bottom. Um, see, and I don't know, I, I, I can't make it work right. I can't get it to fill out on either side, and I know that it does it because I've used it before. This one right here is a 4K camera, and uh, I've used it. It works really nicely. And this one, I've spent a lot of time trying to get the color right. It's still a little bit, oh, I don't know, magenta, a titch to magenta, but not much to, so, okay. Let's see. Uh, hello from far west Missouri. 1.75 inches of rain. That's a lot of rain. 52 degrees, 40% uh, relative humidity. Vertical HF antenna up with new guys. New guy, uh, yeah, I just bought a thousand foot roll of what I hope is no stretch UV resistant rope. Yeah, it's a thousand feet, and uh, I'm going to put up this. You know that thirty-foot tall thing that I put up based on Stephen's design. Uh, the wind got it and bend it like that. So uh, when Aiden is here next, I'm going to have him uh, help disassemble it and see if we can get it down to one piece that needs to be replaced, and then we're going to double guy it. Not just at the top, but halfway up, too. So that hopefully it will do what it's supposed to do and not bend. Because it's a very convenient experimental uh, device. It's 30 feet tall. And I've got rope running up. So I can run an antenna up, run it back down. And uh, that's been extremely useful. Right now, it's on the ground. Since it bent... Um, I asked Aiden to just let her rip fall over, and it didn't hurt anything. And uh, so we've got, you know, something that we can repair. I looked today at uh, plastic. There are some plastic or fiberglass antenna elements that you can get. Now, unfortunately... These things, which are four feet long, they have kind of an opening at the bottom, and on the other end, you have uh, a part that's actually a piece put into here and crimped in two places, and I think welded. Um, but this, these snap into each other, and they'll go up a fairly good distance. I have five of them, and they were given to me at Quartzfest, by somebody who took pity on me trying to raise an antenna there. Um, anyway, 
Um, I looked at ordering more of them, and they're kind of hard to find. Um, so I sent an inquiry to somebody um, that supposedly carries them. One of the places, the place this one comes from, they're out of stock on everything. So I don't know if you can get them anymore. They're military surplus. Um, but boy, I'd sure like to get some more of those because they make for great antennas and you can guide them and, and get them up pretty high. Okay, let's see. Uh, Chris at Buddy Pole said he was arranging for pickup today, but UPS is running very late. Or Chris didn't get around to getting in contact with UPS. Sometimes those things take a, a day or two. Uh, Bill Myers, congrats on the sale of your airplane. It's bittersweet, I'm sure. Uh, yes, I haven't been trying terribly hard to sell it. And I've been a little picky about how much money I'll take for it, too. Uh, now I keep telling people I'm not really um, motivated to sell this airplane because, uh, you know, it's my, my airplane. I've always wanted an airplane. So, anyway, uh, Optical Man Jeff, Dave, is it true that rain will change the electrical length of an antenna? It can. Remember that everything affects everything. But in this case, when you put water on an antenna, antenna whether it's insulated or not, uh, if it's right on the wire, it acts as a dielectric. Uh, Rainwater is not conductive, but to speak of, but uh, the, it acts as additional dielectric on the antenna, which causes the velocity factor to change, which causes it to detune a little bit. This will be worse, of course, with lower frequencies and so on, but rest assured it will go away when the thing dries out. Okay. Um, Greetings from, this is Mr. G from KD9FCZ. Um, and greetings to you too. And Von Ziggle, uh, we've got the uh, mention before, $10. Uh, Kelly Eddington, how can verticals have gain? There's a couple things going on here. Okay. Verticals have unity gain. Same gain as a dipole. However, um, if the vertical's not just a half wavelength long, but like three-eighths of a wavelength and so on, it's taller, and if you can tune it, it causes... Well, I just happen to have a camera where I can show you that. Um, um, let's see, it's right here. No, oh, my thing's not there. I'll just draw it out here, sort of. Um, if you have an antenna, you'll have a radiation pattern about like this. But if you have a taller antenna that's tunable, it'll push your radiation pattern down. Now, that gives you gain in that direction at the same time that it's hurting gain in other directions. So that's one way that a vertical can give you some gain. Now, a vertical that was very popular when I first got into ham radio was the so-called 5 eighths. Uh, so that's a little more than half a wavelength. Um, and they're tuned at the bottom. And they make great 2-meter antennas. However, mine, the top of it's all crinkled where it constantly gets clogged in the garage door mechanism. So, you know, but they work, they work, they actually work. Um, now, when I say unity gain, I say in reference to dipole. Unity is a fancy way that scientists have of referring to the number one. Uh, and unity means when something equals unity, or one. You add these two things together, you always get the number one in whatever units you happen to be working with. Sine squared plus cosine squared, I think, is equal to one. There's all kinds of things like that.
1 is a nice number. It's only divisible by itself, 1. So I guess you could sort of argue it's prime, but generally 2 is considered the first prime. Um, and you multiply it by anything, you don't change it, and so on. The term unity comes from a scriptural reference where Jesus said that I would that you be one, uh, united. And that's where the term unity came from in mathematics. But unity gain means the same gain as a dipole. Now, in the amateur general book, I think it is, might be in the extra, which I'm in the process of revising now for the, the videos because the questions change in 1st of July. So you've got some time to take it with the old questions and the old videos. If you... Um, if you look at an isotropic radiator, which is a theoretical radiator in free space, it takes your 100 watts and sends it equally in all directions. If you instead put a dipole in free space, you get this donut pattern where at the maximum gain coming out the ends, is 2.15 dB. However, I do not know anyone who lives in free space. I've never met anyone who lives in free space. We live on the ground, and the ground has tremendous impact on the radiation of radio waves. If you put a dipole at a half wave above the ground, it has a gain of somewhere between 5 and 7 db because not only are you sending something out you're sending something to the ground which reflects and comes out and reinforces what goes out the same is true for a vertical okay so um now how do you get any more gain from a vertical well other than making it a little longer uh the thing that you can do is put two of them up you can actually create a vertical Yagi just by planting poles in the, in the ground, the, the upper half of the uh, Yagi. It will work. Then you're only feeding one element. But what people like to do is put four verticals up, a uh, quarter wavelength apart, something like that. And depending on how you phase the feed, you can get a quarter lobe to go in any direction. So it'll take four ways, collapse them to one. So that's a four to one or six dB gain. That's a full S unit. That can be done with them. Now, if you want to get really fancy and you have figured out a way to get uh, other than quarter wavelength delays, you can make that go in just about any direction. You've probably seen pictures of military radars. They have a face that's flat. And they can shoot a beam out there, and then they can shoot a beam out there, and out there, and then they do a sweep. And, you know, they're, they're very good at doing a variety of things. These have been around since, I guess, the 60s. Now, when I was in the Air Force, I was radar maintenance officer for 660th Radar Squadron, and we still use the kind that circled and stuff like that. But at the same time, they were developing the pave paws and uh, some of the others, which are stationary radars that are um, capable of doing some pretty amazing things by changing the phasing. So you don't have to sweep. You look over there, then you look over there, then you look over there, and so on. Uh, very interesting stuff that goes on with the uh, phased array radars. Okay, so uh, there's a couple different ways that verticals can have gain. Uh, you know, when I say unity gain, I mean a vertical or a dipole or something like unto it will have uh, unity gain gain of one, meaning no gain. That'd be zero dB, right? 
but there you go. Terry Hallowell. Hello, Terry. Welcome. Greetings from Rudolph, Ohio. KE8CVA and best wishes. Larry Fields, good morning. Todd AI4TB. Uh, look at collinear. Yeah, that's that's the kind that I was talking about. Now you can stack verticals like this, and if you feed them correctly, it takes the radiation pattern and pulls it way down. And for land-based antennas, that's pretty good. Um, Stephen McGrath, good evening, everyone. AA1HF. Interstellar Starman, you're a legacy in ham radio, Dave. Thank you for all you do. Well, thank you, and I appreciate that, and you're welcome. Uh, phase manipulation, yes, from Todd. Kelly Eddington, according to physics, verticals don't have gangs. Um, I think what you mean is gain, um, and yes, they do. They have gain over an isotropic radiator. And don't forget the negative gain is a kind of gain too, but <coughs> if you stick them collinear or you put out phased arrays or something like that, you can play games with them. Um, I like verticals. That's what I'm going to use for tonight's uh, contacts is vertical. Okay. Um, Todd, AI4TB. Collinear is not a single straight wire. It's a vertical with multiple sections. They most definitely do have gain. Yeah, the ones I've seen are just, well, yeah, they're, they're there. Theodore, to Echo Zero, Gulf India. Yankee, to Echo Zero would be the UK. Good morning. Is there a way to make an antenna resonant through a whole 80-meter band without an antenna tuner? If you get a wire, as you thicken your wire... Uh, the bandwidth goes up. So what people do is make so-called cage antennas where they'll have like four or six parallel wires held apart by stringers and then they're tied together at the ends and at the feed point. And so it is in essence a very thick uh, antenna that's simulated by those wires. And those have a wider bandwidth on 80 meters. The problem with 80 meters, uh, the top is 4 megahertz. The bottom is 3.5. But that's half a megahertz at 4 megahertz. So that's what? 12.5% of the top frequency that that antenna has to cover. 12.5% is a huge amount to cover with a single antenna. 160 meters is even worse. So 40 meters, uh, you can generally get the whole band, but we're talking 300 um, kilohertz out of 7 megahertz. So it's a percentage-wise, it's a much smaller portion. Okay. And so if you tune for the middle of that, you're usually under 2 to 1 or even better um, across the entire band. In fact, this um, step IR is supposed to tune itself to be exactly resonant uh, on the frequency I want to use. I just park it somewhere in 40 meters because it's going to be good across the entire band. Uh, furthermore, you're not going to get a one-to-one -one out of a vertical anyway because the base uh, impedance, the input impedance, is about 30 ohms. So you're already talking about 1.5, 1.6 uh, SWR. Now, if I ran it through uh, the Riggs uh, antenna tuner, it would tune it up just nice, fine, one-to-one. -one. But uh, they told me, step by R, don't do that. And I go, I'm not going to argue with you, but it's okay. So, let's see. Phase manipulation, yes. Um, whoops. Uh, 
Uh, good morning is uh, okay usable through the whole 80 meter band so the the answer basically is no now um, this step IR will do 80 meters but it has a switchable coil at the bottom that you switch to different parts of the band uh, Paul G hi Dave and fellow Augies from sunny Brisbane VK4 Delta Papa Charlie it's tomorrow there and it's midday Warren Baker, greetings from Chattanooga, WA4BAK, where it's 72, 51% humidity. Sounds comfortable. Harry Rundle, hello Dave and fellow Augies from AC3EK. From Oakley, Maryland, temperature 50 degrees, 77 humidity. Happy World Amateur Day. Very good. Larry Fields, currently 88 uh, F, freak, uh, <laughs> Fahrenheit, looking for parts for my 718. The writ and volume controls need replacement. I have a tech looking. My FTM 100 is at a tech, so been busy. I am seeing um, issues with the. Uh, see, I get a, a small window here that shows what's actually going out and it's showing there's some stopping there. Uh, Hamfest attendance rate are declining. Actually last year at Dayton was the highest attendance they ever had. Uh, 33,000. It was quite a bit more than the year before which is the last one I attended. Uh, it's very popular. I don't know. There's also Sun and Fun in Florida and the Huntsville are the big three in the U.S., unfortunately, all in the eastern half of the country. I go out to Pacificon, which is growing back after the pandemic. I spoke twice at Sun and Fun. By the way, I am open again to speaking engagements via Zoom uh, to clubs. I'm going to go down to wherever it went here, Flagstaff. In July, I'm going to drive down there because it's only a day's drive away and um, it's gonna be a little warm there, but uh, I'm going to give a talk there in person, but normally I would do it like I did it at the Longmont Ham Fest recently by Zoom. Okay, um, rates are declining. We live in an electronics hobbyist golden age. Discrete components of all kinds are still readily available. Radios are shipped next day from HRO and I might add DX Engineering. Uh, Guitar Town Radio from Guitar Town USA. Benjamin Otto, maybe they need to get Raleigh Hollingsworth back as their keynote speaker. I have heard him. Um, he's good. I've met him. He knows who I am. So, um, Larry Fields, my hometown had a volunteer fire department. The CHP used to laugh at how the guys would race to get a truck. Yeah. What cameras are you using? This one right up here is the classic Logitech. It says HD 1080p, but there's a model number for it. The one behind the teleprompter screen is a uh, 4K one that I picked up fairly recently. And this one that I've been having the trouble with here is a Microsoft uh, and ten, uh, that's 1080p. And that's the one that I've had the most trouble connecting to the computer. Okay. Um, Benjamin Otto, people don't go to HamFest to watch a speech from an ICOM rep. No, unless they've come out with something brand new. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, I'm not an ICOM rep, although since I have an ICOM 7300, in the reference station. I think a lot of people have just gone with that. Uh, it's been 10 years, I think, since I put that together. 
I need to revisit it. I mean, the ICOM 7300 is still a great radio. And, uh, but uh, this Yesu's got some real nice radios now too. Maybe I'll put an either or or something like that. Internet says to change camera size, do right click in the sources or in source list, transform, edit, transform, or just click on the source list and hit control E. Tedor, I will try that when uh, we finish because I don't want to lose uh, the, the thing here. And crop with alt and grabbing edge. Okay. Hey, Harry, Ronald, Dave, I'm getting good performance from my 6BTV Hustler. Now I would like to model it with antenna analyzer software. Being a trapped antenna, have you run analysis on trapped antennas? Um, with the antenna book, there's a list of modeling parameters for many, many different antennas. And yes, um, EZNEC will handle trapped antennas. Um, I've never done it, though. But I'll have to look at and put on, um, make a video about uh, something having to do uh, with modeling a trapped antenna. Okay, and then I'll, I'll have the actual links. Antenna tuning question. I, I bought a four element Yagi for my low RAM mesh testic node. It has a folded dipole driven element. The SWR is 3.8 on 915 megahertz, which is the lower frequency in Australia. Best method to tune it, please. You know, you can use a uh, nano VNA to tune that because um, it'll go up that high. It goes up over a gigahertz. A lot of the, the big handheld ones don't. So if you have a nano VNA, try tuning that. Keep the, well, the problem with the feed line on that is that it's many wavelengths long, okay? You can use the TLA transmission, no, TLW, transmission line for Windows software that comes with uh, the antenna book and um, to get some idea what the coax is doing to you. So that's what I would do. Uh, okay, let's see. Finley Bonariba uh, present, and uh, UPS just now showed up. Well, very good. You'll get your stuff all taken care of then. Uh, good evening, Dave and all. Augie's N5KVO from the Hill Country, South Texas. We're going to get on to the radio here in a minute. Military antenna poles, yes. Um... Okay, let's see. Um, former Philippine Army tech, yeah. I'm on the wrong side of the world. I would love to have you know, four or five more of them. Been about a year since I last checked in. This time last year I copied CW10, fast forward to now, and just received the 20 word per minute endorsement sticker to my W1AW code proficiency certificate. That's from Domino Storm 1, and I have to congratulate you. There is a plateau at about 18 words a minute that's really hard to break through. And so if you've got the 20, you're, you're doing uh, really fine. Um, okay, yeah, you can adjust the tuning on those uh, antennas, Paul. Um, yeah, they are very strong. Tech in general, find your videos entertaining. Thank you for being so passionate about radio. Thank you. I want to get... Uh, Brian, please don't throw politics in here. Um, well, we don't need to do that. Uh, it'll come out the way it comes out. And believe me, there's plenty other fora in which to discuss politics. 
Uh, an extra comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. GMRS is getting very popular lately. Yes, it is. Uh, the license for GMRS, all you have to do is send the FCC 50 bucks. And it's good for your whole family, too. And hunters use GMRS a lot. And there are, believe it or not, GMRS repeaters. And I think five of the channels overlap with the family radio service. So you can have kids with their little walkie-talkies able to talk to you, too. Okay, let's see. Um, Bill Myers, K-A-8-G-I-M, has added $10 to the chat revenue. Thanks, Dave. You've always been, always have the answers to questions that I have before I even know that I have them. <laughs> Very good. All right, we're going to go live. Um, well, live. We're going to go on the radio. Now, the reason this uh, live stream is not monetized is so that you can hear it. Uh, and I'm going to turn the this over here and tune down over here so you can see it. And I hope you can hear it just fine. And we'll see what we've got. Oh, I always hit the top button. Okay. frequency muse is this frequency muse okay seven one nine six seven one nine six okay seven one nine six this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Gold uh, we have our little weekly live stream uh, net and I'm going to turn off that because I'm getting feedback in it. Uh, so this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. This uh, net is associated with a free unmonetized live stream on YouTube. Um, and is there anyone who would like to call? Go now, please. Kilo Alpha 8 Golf India Mike. Kilo Alpha 8 Golf India Mike. Hello, and I should have your name memorized by now because you're always checking in. Uh, but please tell me your name, location, and tell me a little bit about your station. Roger, Roger, Dave. Your name here is Bill Bravo in Lima, Lima. And yes, I like to check in on your, on your net. I love watching your live stream, of course. I'm running an ICOM 7300 100 watts of power into a deactivated vertical, and the QTH is in northern part of Wisconsin. So, Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf, this is K-A-A-G-I-M, back to you. Well, thank you very much, Bill, and I appreciate that. And you've got a very nice signal in here. I'm going to give you a 5.9 for that, and um, I'm going to say 73 this time, turn it back to you for a final, and then we'll see who else is there. Uh, so, K-A-A-G-I-M, K-E-0-O-G. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf QRM. I uh, QRZ, I mean. Kilo Echo Zero Oscar The Papa Lima Station. Please try again. Okay, very good. Please give me your call sign again. I do not have it. I just have the Papa Lima. Again, please, several times. Uh, 
the Papa Lima station, please come back with your call sign a couple of times, please. Okay, Kilo November 6, Zulu Papa Lima. Very nice to talk to you. A little hard to uh, pick up through all of the static, but um, I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to give you a 4 by 5 and uh, nice to talk to you this evening. Your 857 is doing a good job. What kind of antenna are you using? Go ahead. Okay, I picked up the Wolf River Coil. I tried their uh, vertical take it along antenna and was very impressed with that. And I'm going to take that along to Dayton. Uh, that was purchased with channel funds. Uh, they did not send it to me, so very good. All right, well, very nice to talk to you. Uh, I'm going to say 73, turn it back to you for a final, and then we'll see who else we've got. Okay, very good. Well, very nice to talk to you this evening and uh, look forward to doing it again. So, uh, this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Gall, QRZ. I know there's somebody in there, but I can't make it out. Let's try again. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Gall, QRZ. Kilo Whiskey 9 Whiskey. Uh, this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. Name here is Dave, Southern Colorado. And back to you. Uh, yeah, uh, how's it going, Dave? This is Zach with uh, Zach from Tucson, Arizona. I'm um, watching you on my screen right now. Uh, finally got to you. Okay, well, very good. Uh, you got a nice 5x9 signal here. Uh, tell us a little bit about your station. Go ahead. Yeah, yes. So I'm running a A2 at TDX 10, and I'm running a, a 9 to 1 uh, with a, it's a long wire, an NSAID long wire, random wire. Go ahead. Oh, very good. Well, it sounds like it works really well for you. And that FTDX 10 sure sounds like a nice radio. I have the FTDX 3000 which is sitting on a shelf at the moment, and my radio here is an ICOM 7300. So I'm going to say 73 on this go around and turn it back to you for a final, and then we'll see who else we can uh, capture. Go ahead. All right, yeah, so very good. You're also 5'9". Um, again, pleasure talking to you. Um, 73, KE0OG, KW9W. 73, and this is uh, Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf, uh, QRZ. Hello, CQ, CQ, this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf, CQ, CQ, here's Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf, go, go ahead. I'm not hearing anything. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf uh, calling CQ, 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 uh, going along with our live stream. This is being live streamed on a non monetized channel on YouTube. So uh, if anybody is there, this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. Come now, please. Uh, check your uh, frequency readout and see if you're at 7196.0. Um, and try again, please. Well, I'm not hearing anything. Uh, CQ, 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 here's Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. 
You know, I'm going to change antennas. CQ, CQ, CQ. Here is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. K-E-0-O-G. Uh, Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf calling CQ and listening. Okay, the station with Bravo Romeo, please come again. Okay, Kilowatt Lima, and then give me the rest of your call again. I'm sorry, there's so much today. Okay, Kilo 9, Bravo, Romeo, Sierra, and uh, my name is Dave, I'm in southwestern Colorado, and uh, we're doing this with our live stream, uh, and uh, so tell me your name and about your station, go ahead. Okay, very good, Don, in Indiana. We're going to be crossing across Indiana pretty soon on our way to Dayton. It'll be in May next month. So, very nice to talk to you. I'm going to say 73 this uh, go around and turn it back to you for a final. K9BRS, KE0OG. Okay, 73. This is Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf, QRZ. Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf. KE0OG, Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf, calling CQ and listening. I'm sorry, try that again. I think that was Kilo Foxtrot Zero X-Ray Delta. Is that correct? I'm sorry, give me your suffix again. Okay, got it that time. Kilo Foxtrot Zero and uh, the suffix of alpha uh, x-ray papa is that correct oh we've got some interference on another band uh tell me your name and location please Okay, very good in Colorado. And uh, there's an <laughs> awful lot of uh, QR Nancy uh, static this evening. Awful lot. It's getting into summer and it's going to be worse. So, uh, very nice to talk to you today. I'm going to give you about, because of the static, a 4 by uh, 5 on that. And uh, tell us a little bit about your station. Go ahead. Okay, I heard the 7610. I've used that radio and um, kept. I borrowed it and kept it far too long. Um, and uh, Brad Rich loaned me that radio and <laughs> finally told me to bring it back. So I did. Um, yeah, what a wonderful radio. I didn't want to let it go. It's just a great radio. My favorite so far. Uh, but I've got the 7300, which is pretty good here. So I'm going to say 73 this go around and then turn it back to you for a final. KF4, uh, KF0, Alpha X-Ray Papa. Here's Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf.
Kilo. Okay, you're very welcome. And we're at the top of the hour now. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf, uh, QRZ. Kilo Charlie 3, Sierra India, November. Uh, Kilo Charlie 3, Sierra India, November. You must get kidded about that call sign, I would imagine. And uh, this is Dave, uh, located in southwestern Colorado, 100 watts to a 7300 to a step IR um, vertical, big IR vertical. So, back to you. Tell me your name and where you are and a little bit about your station. KC3SIN. Here's Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. All righty. Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. KC3SIN retarded. Dave, I met you uh, two years ago at Hamvention. My wife, Kenny, and I will be there. In fact, she received her technician at that time. And last year, she got her general license. But... We're here in, uh, my name is Jack, by the way, and we are here in Dallas, Pennsylvania, which is in the northeastern side of PA, and I'm glad that you're uh, hand to hand venture. We're going to look you up to say hi and congratulations, maybe, on the film uh, uh, plane. But anyway, good work. Uh, we enjoy your live stream, and thank you for everything you do. So back to you, Dave, uh, KE0, KC3SIN. Well, very good, Jack, and uh, nice 5-9 signal here, uh, trying to cut through all that static. Oh, my, it's terrible. The first person who invents a static remover is going to become a rich man, I think. Maybe they can do it with AI. Nothing else has done it. So, um, Jack, very nice to talk to you, and congratulations to your wife on getting her general, and I'm glad she's coming along. Um, and we will, uh, let's see, I'll be at Dayton probably hanging around the ARRL booth uh, a couple times a day. So uh, there's a, a part of the ARRL booth where Steve Goodgame is. You can't miss him. He's very tall. And uh, he is the um, YouTuber liaison and also the ARRL online teacher kind of thing. So he has a separate little area, and I'll be in and out, but uh, you can leave something with him. So, um, Jack, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. I'm going to say 73 this go-around, and turn it back to you for a final, and then we'll see who else we can pick up. KC3, Sierra Indian November. Uh, this is Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf. Okay, very good, Dave. KE0 OG, KC3 SI. Thanks for all that you do, my friend. We can't wait to shake your hand again. My wife Jenny says hello. God bless you. Have a good day. 73. KC3 S29. Very good, Jack. See you at Dayton. Uh, this is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf QRZ. Echo Zero Alpha Fox Pro. Echo Zero Alpha Fox Pro. Okay, the Alpha Fox Trot Oscar. Uh, come back. Delta Zero Alpha Fox Hot Oscar. Delegate to our campus. Uh, Tuesday, Squad 100 MXA Alpha. WD0 AFO. WD0 AFO. What was your name again? Go ahead. Yeah, Delta Oscar Uniform George. Doug. Okay. Sorry, my mind wasn't working there. It's old. Uh, <laughs> and getting older every year, I'm afraid. Although I don't know of any electronic computer that's actually lasted 72 years. In July of this year, I'm going to have the best ham radio birthday because I'll turn 73. So that'll be great. Your Swan 100 is doing a good job. Is this the all-tube Swan or is this the one that's mostly transistor? Go ahead. Yeah, Roger, the 100 MXA was 100% uh, uh, trans, uh, solid state. Uh, yeah, I thought, I think, uh, if you use 79 or the 80s, so I've had that radio system, that's bad news. But I had to finish it, and then I got down here and see how I was doing. I,
been working on it a little bit. So, uh, I appreciate uh, you running the event. And yeah, like I said, my other radio here is in the long cell I see it. And then I've got a link called DXA, the DXA. So, uh, uh, anyhow, uh, that's my station. I'll see you know, the wind is on uh, up about 20 feet uh, going into uh, LDG. We'll get these early, folks. Okay, very good, and thank you very much at 73s. So, um, this is Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf, QRZ. November 8, Charlie, Victor, Victor. November 8, Charlie, Victor, Victor. November 8, Charlie, Victor, Victor. What a nice signal, 59 signal here. Um, tell me your name and a little bit about your station. Yeah, November is truly Victor Victor. Uh, Kendall here is Walter, just north of Detroit, over, over. Okay, north of Detroit. That gets you pretty close to Canada. Um, oh, very good. And uh, tell me where you are. Oh, you just told me where you were. Okay, north of Detroit. And tell me a little bit about your station. Go ahead. Yeah, just about the noise, Dave. Wow, the noise has crept in here. By the way, Rick here, ICOM 7300, Ameritron ALS 500 amp, and the same uh, MFK uh, power supply you run. I think I have the identical station to you there, Dave. And that is all going to a vertical, a uh, demon commander vertical. By the way, I love your vi uh, videos. Love your videos. Look forward to it. Back over to you there, Dave. Uh, KT-008, November 8, Charlie, Victor, Victor. November 8, Charlie, Victor, Victor. Here is Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf. I just kicked in my amplifier, so hopefully this will add about a S unit to the signal. Um, and thank you very much for being a follower, an Augie, and all the things that uh, all the Augies do to keep this, uh, this thing going. So I will be at Dayton, and uh, I guess that's not terribly far from Detroit, but still a serious drive. So thank you very much. I'm going to say 73 and turn it back to you for a final. November 8, uh, Charlie, Victor, Victor. Here's Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf. 73 back to you for final. All right, Dave, thank you very much. You've got a lot of people waiting. I don't want to be rude, and you know what? I might see a Dayton, and i got to simulate the economy. Hi, hi. By the way, uh, Amp made it a little different. Uh, S9, uh, maybe a 5 over, S9, 5 over. There's a new boss. So anyway, uh, 73, is, uh, good luck, and uh, uh, keep your health up. Keep your health up there, Dave. We're looking forward to more videos. Okay, Kilo, uh, let's see, November Charlie, November 8, Charlie Victor Victor is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. I think we may have just awakened the shortwave station because I'm hearing an interval signal, although it's a little bit after the hour. Normally the interval signals start a couple minutes before the hour. So, this is uh, Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf, QRZ. Kilo Echo Zero, Oscar Golf. Oh, dear. Um, oh, let's turn this around where I can see it. Okay, we're going to have to end there simply because um, we got the very powerful interference and rather than try and establish another frequency for just five minutes let's wrap up here um, that's fun and I will eventually get um, QSL cards out to everybody and uh, thank you for sticking with me we've still got 75 people who are uh, hanging on to listen to this. If uh, this is something that you really enjoy, let me know. Let me know right now if doing this live on the air is something that you enjoy, and we'll, we'll do more of it. We may have to move 
up to 20 meters or something like that. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, oh, the Army Tech went silent. Key from Larry in Manila. Leo73, Dave, and everyone till next week. Glenn, thanks for all you do to help us hams. Neil, cheers, Leo. Big John's Ham Shack. Does he have talk back on that radio? Uh, well, I can hear people calling me. Um, and we were at 7196 kilohertz, which is in the 40 meter band. And so, and I'm not sure if I somehow slipped into the advanced band. Let's just check here. On uh, 40 meters, uh, 7125 is the bottom of, oh no, 7175. Okay, we were in the general band. Okay, I want to do it in general, so everybody has a chance to do that. Um, K4TA says, have a nice evening. Uh, Bill says, thanks. Uh, ben the Slice, thanks for the info and education. Always uh, appreciate the info. Uh, S9 plus static crashes here in southeast Iowa. I know we had that. Uh, that's here, too. And almost every one of those static crashes uh, came from a lightning bolt. And probably somewhere here, but those static crashes... Remember, a lightning bolt is... A long piece of electrified air, ionized air. So it's a conductor. And there's a lot of current in there. And what makes antennas radiate is the current, the actual movement of the electrons, or whatever is moving in the antenna, usually electrons. But you can also get the positive uh, charges moving too. But you've got this great big long vertical antenna with a huge amount of current in it, makes a very broadband noise. So you'll hear the same static crash across a very broad spectrum. And lightning, since it's a radio wave, is absolutely perfectly happy to bounce off the ionosphere, or bounce off the ionosphere and cause havoc and trouble all the way around the world. So, so even though there are no lightning storms near here, there are lightning storms that uh, we're hearing. Okay, let's see. Guitar Town Radio, recent solar activity is disrupting radio for sure. Yes, uh, Dave Troy 20, I'll have to do that. We'll do that next week, okay? Had a few bursts here, but not enough to hear it. Oh, really? And then a lot of strong static. Our net controller this morning was looking for relays even a few miles away. A uh, YB did the relay. 14277 is always good for us. Normal Philippines group. I'll try and remember that. Remind me next week uh, when we do that. Now, I'm going to look at something here on my antenna. We're going to Moab next week. So there will not be a live stream next week because we'll be traveling. Um... Now, in May, I will be able to have a live stream on the 2nd and the 9th, but the 16th will be, actually, we will have arrived at the Dayton KOA. So, if I'm able to rig up, you know, let's see, I've got the little, um, what is it, the Wolf River Coils TIA, take it along. Um, is in a very small bag and I think I'll throw that in the uh, the RV and also throw in oh, I've got so many um, mag loop antennas I'll throw one of those in too take that along so there may or may not depending on the internet connectivity be a live stream on the 16th Okay, and then we will again be traveling on the 23rd, but we'll be back by the 30th. My assistant just texted me and said he will not be here tomorrow, which is too bad. We've got a lot of stuff we need to do. And I need somebody who's not 74 or 72 to do it. I need somebody who's like 17 
uh, to do it. But we'll do that. Okay, so everybody, let's take a look. 20 meters, we'll do 20 next uh, year. General section. Okay, Stephen McGrath, live on the air is fun. And William Schultz, I just renewed my general class. Uh, very good. Doug Dry, I'm encouraged to get either my NFED half-wave dipole back up or my new DX commander up and on the air to join the net. Uh, either of those are uh, very good antennas. And Guitar Town Radio, your life has meaning. Well, thank you. Dave, you and the DJ were coming in 5-9 to MSP. Okay. So there we are. We are at the end. I'm a little bit over time. Sorry about that. So I'm going to say 73, and I probably will not be able to see you next week. Although, you know, there's no reason I can't take along the Wolf River Coils antenna and see what I can get out. Uh, if I get people banging at my door threatening to uh, cut my legs off or kneecap me or whatever, I may not. But we'll see how it goes. I'll be in an RV park in Moab. So, until next time, until we next meet, 73.